I would want to convince more people that this is actually in their interests because, again, mm. uh, I'll give you another link after this to look at. But when you use terms like the colonizer and the colonized and you have the like you white person are a colonizer and you have the blood on your hand of your ancestors, you are committing genocide and shame on you. Like you're not going to convince anybody on the other end of that argument that you should look into land back and it's actually a good idea. They're going to become defensive, right? They're, they're going to listen to that and be like, why are you saying things? I had no part in this. Like I was I was just born here, you know, like. I yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's basically my entire fucking point here. Oh, one sec. I'm just going to uh, talk to Dr. Heemdout for two seconds. I want to clarify something that him and uh, him and Professor Flowers were talking about. Hello. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, Dr. Heemd. How's it going? Good. How are you? Uh, quite well. Quite well. How did your debate go? Uh, I thought it was going well, but then she kind of quit. I don't know. Oh, OK. Yeah, but I was nice. Everyone said I was being nice. It wasn't like I was yelling or anything. Uh, I was just like trying to literally like yeah just get an idea for what her perspective on things were well I watched like um I think the first 15 or 20 minutes uh but I just wanted to clarify something because the two of you were talking about indigenous issues and land back and stuff yeah and uh I happen to be in a unique position since I'm uh half indigenous so I've got the the colonizer and the colonized inside me um yeah but uh <laughs> to uh to speak to to speak to the issue of land back and i i heard you say at one point and i i didn't really think that there was an adequate response when you said like as an immigrant i just i just don't really like wrapping my head around the idea that i'm on stolen land and that i'm supposed to leave right um uh, no i understand that it's stolen land i just yeah i don't like the idea that um that i that i have to leave or like that i'm not welcome here or whatever yeah yeah yeah, totally and i completely get that i would also hate the idea if i was say uh you know well i am white but if i was white and someone said hey by the way go back to western europe or something you know <laughs> yeah kind exactly, of that idea yeah. and i'm totally on board with that the land back movement in canada that's not their aims or goals what sure. they are what they're fighting for and what they're saying publicly is that these treaties that were signed initially like when canada was originally formed as a country you know that like a huge section of it used to be owned by a company the hudson bay company yeah yeah and so what they were doing is there's all this like a lot of the early business in canada came from the fur trade so what mm -hmm. these uh what the early settlers did when they came to canada is that they were trying to form negotiations with indigenous people because they knew the land way better and they could help them catch the best kind of like uh you know the best fur coats they would know the, the rivers they would know how to canoe course, stuff like yeah. this yeah so sure. what so what a lot of the early deals were is they actually settled on what they would determine is your land and you have sovereign uh control over it so rather than think of it as like uh you know this territory belongs to so and so this territory it's more like this is like a country like there's countries within countries kind of like more like canada's like mm. a continent with some smaller countries in it that's sure. that's what they're trying to to win back is the the actual treaties that have already been negotiated and signed but were never honored um right. and then on top of that they're not looking to kick people off that land it's kind of like sure. um it's the same thing as if like you know i wouldn't want to tell like mexico how their immigration policy should work it's kind of like the mm -hmm. summary the easiest way that i'd explain it to somebody um and in the cases of where land back has successfully been won in the supreme court of canada like the biggest example i can point you to is uh the squamish nation won in british columbia a huge amount of really really expensive land in vancouver yeah, i'm just like, gonna write this down so i can look, oh, yeah. up, look more detail into it so you said squamish yeah so squamish nation in British Columbia. Is it SK or SQ? SQ. Okay. So the Squamish Nation in British Columbia won a historic, a huge land back settlement, and they won it in like the bougiest, most expensive part of Vancouver. Like we're talking primo multi-million dollar waterfront really? properties. Yeah, it's wild. Okay. But then when you look it up, the coolest thing about it is what they're building there is they're building a massive green social housing project that's going to be very low income housing for people who can't afford it in British Columbia. And also they're trying to make that like city of the future where like every like floor has all these trees growing out of it and everything. It might be sure. way too... Uh, ambitious it might just be like you know that picture the meme when it's like this would be the future uh if only such and such didn't happen and then it's like it looks like a space land or whatever 
Mm-hmm. Have you seen that meme? Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen yeah, yeah. That's, they're basically trying to build that. Like, if you look at the pictures, that's what it looks like. They're trying to build that. Yeah. But they're not saying, this is just okay. for indigenous people. Everyone gets off our mm-hmm. property. Go back to the rest of Canada. They're, they're oh, just... I, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I understand. I understand that that's not... Uh, I, I don't think... If, I, if it came off as though I was saying that that's what land back is, I obviously mm-hmm. don't think that. It was okay. more just, like, speaking to the rhetoric behind colonizer and colonized and you know yeah no i i get that and honestly for me like if i was to tell someone else i was like what is your goal in trying to talk to people about these issues my personal goal would be trying to turn someone's minds onto the idea that land back is actually not a negative thing or has anything to do with ethno ethno nationalism or anything like that i would want to convince more people that this is actually in their interests because again Mm. uh, i'll give you another link after this to look at but when you use terms like the colonizer and the colonized and you have the like you white person are a colonizer and you have the blood on your hand of your ancestors you are committing genocide and shame on you like you're not going to convince anybody on the other end of that argument that you should look into land back and it's actually a good idea they're going to become defensive right they're, they're going to listen to that and be like why are you saying thing? i had no part in this like i was i was just born here you know like I- yeah exactly exactly <laughs> and that's 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 basically my entire fucking point here is that i i feel like you can at the same time advocate for indigenous rights advocate for fixing these systemic um problems while at the same time recognizing that like yeah white people where a lot of the colonization was done by white people but fuck Hmm. what are you going to do like it is what it is we have to deal with the hand that was dealt and try to make the best of the current situation i don't know if like pointing to a white person and saying uh, you're a colonizer is is necessarily the best kind of attitude to have towards these issues it's one of it's one of those optics things and for me like for me is it is important to convince someone that this is actually going to be in their interest um especially because like the other the, the other thing if if you're still writing stuff down look up national geographics article on um indigenous people and uh land protection because they they did this big investigation where they show that 85 percent of the world's biodiversity is protected by indigenous people and they oh, make yeah, up, i've heard this and, and they make up five percent of the uh, the population, so like, it it actually would be in your interest to have more indigenous sovereignty in Canada because there might be certain things that otherwise um, would just have no oversight over, right? Like they they would they would plow through indigenous lands to to lay pipelines sometimes. I'm, I'm just sure. saying, like, I'm not gonna get through all all the uh, the grit of it, but I agree. Okay, but so the, what you're saying is a vastly different from what the argument was was okay sure i i I I didn't know i just i just i just it's one of those things where i tuned in and then i heard you say something like i as an immigrant i just don't like the idea of people saying that like i'm blank and i was like okay then this this argument is being misconstrued then because that's not what land back or land back defenders are saying like they they don't they don't say like get off our land whiteies and stuff like that you know the thing that the thing that that led me to say that was because she was saying that it's like their land they should get to determine what they want to do with their colonizers this kind of rhetoric i I really don't like it at all sure if you take the language away from it if 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 someone has already won a land back settlement or they already have autonomy you have to kind of wrap your head around that it's the same thing as if that was like a sovereign country right so i wouldn't tell mexico what to do with their immigration policy as i wouldn't tell like you know the west people to do that yeah sorry sure okay let me ask you a question okay and again i'm not trying to be an asshole i'm just like i'm yeah, kind of, of course. From you, okay. Yeah. Let's say that some uh, indigenous community has, yeah. um, I don't know, fuck, any number of things that Canada doesn't agree with. Let's say, oh, of course, child, child slavery. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, or uh, for, or genital mutilation is the example. That sure. I've yeah, yeah. Before. Many, many, yeah. many examples we can think of. How do sure. you reconcile that? Like, this is a nation of people who live within Canada and Canada, Canadian government, our tax money does support them in some way, right? It's not like they're completely cut off. So how does that, how does one reconcile? It, the, it, well, first off, this? it depends from a legal standpoint and an ethical standpoint, are there going to be two different things? And from a legal standpoint, it would depend, first off, is this recognized as, uh, as autonomous indigenous land? Uh, because at which point, yes, your interactions with them would be the same things with your interactions with, say, uh, a country in Africa that performs right. uh, like uh, genital mutilation. You may sure. find that abhorrent, as I do as well. Uh, this doesn't happen, by the way, in Canada. I'm just using no, this I know, as a really, I'm just, Yeah, we're using an extreme yeah, yeah, example. Ex- ex- exactly. Just, uh, but this 
this doesn't happen in Canada, but sure, I can advocate and say out loud that that's abhorrent and I, I want to fight to try and convince or change their minds, but I'm also not going to enforce this this upon them if they are recognized in, as an autonomous country, right? Or an autonomous Even nation. Though, yeah, so I get that, but yeah. then would you say that like that can that Canada shouldn't so it's com should completely back away and like no support financially like what if they hold the financials okay well oh, we're you're opening up a really long conversation because there are regions like land back and the the the, the control of the reservation system in canada are two separate things right the reservation right. system of canada is not technically con it's not considered indigenous land for the vast majority of it and then it's under okay. the purview of the federal government or the provincial government oversight gotcha. both to be able to provide them child care and stuff like that so that's that's a very different case in which case well gotcha. they already control a lot of what goes on in those areas you know so um, basically you're saying you would be okay with basically saying one or the other kind of well i think it should come down to a what what do the indigenous people want who have the right to claim this land itself both uh you know historically because they're not dead yet and they're still living there mm -hmm. but also by the contracts themselves that have already been signed Right. Yeah, I get that. So that that um, deal has already been brokered, kind of thing. And if they do things that I I morally disagree with, I mean, I'll speak out against it. But I would not like if so, if something is being done in Mexico, I I call it out. Yeah, but I don't say I let's that, invade yeah, yeah. Mexico and end this sure, practice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But I I would say that like in the same way how you know BDS kind of right mm -hmm. like we I would put that in the same category. Like if it's if it's something that we morally don't approve of, then um like is it makes sense for to have financial support or any sort of like military support or any of these kind of things right well i mean if if they have become an uh a sovereign nation then the idea yeah, I'm of just trying to talk about yeah so sub i know i know, I know right? so like, i'm saying so yeah, yeah so the idea of financial support would depend on a whether or not canada just wants to like what does canada give to areas just as a generosity kind of thing versus b what would they owe them in terms of reparations would be another discussion sure. that you might have to have but outside of that yeah i mean you'd have to, they'd have to also be in control of a lot of their own sustainability right like uh you right, would, right. you'd in essence be entering into trade agreements like it, it's it's a really strange tough, and tricky right? thing yeah. Yeah, yeah to have because it's it, so again it's 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 peppered it like it, it's it's not like this one section can be just crossed off and this is indigenous land and this is uh canada it's like th these these nations are all over the map right in this enormous continent or sorry enormous country for sure it is a continent you're right yeah <laughs> um yeah i mean i agree with a lot of what you're saying and and i don't have any issue with that like I, and I, again i think like it's it's so easy to just advocate for like indigenous rights like having water and having you know all of these things i can do that as like a colonizer or whatever the fuck i am as an immigrant <laughs> an immigrant but, like, colonizer yeah like I, and, and and the whole what i was trying to tell professor flowers was that the, the dichotomy of colonizer and colonized maybe 150 200 years ago would have applied a lot but i mm -hmm. feel like now there's so much travel of individuals there's so mm -hmm. much individual determination of like immigration refugee like mm -hmm. uh, interracial relationships and marriages and all of these things that plays such an important role in like this the analysis that i feel like the whole colonizer versus colonized thing it doesn't even really work anymore it, it should be just systemic so there are systemic issues that need to be addressed Totally. How? What are your feelings? Uh, I'm gonna open up a giant can of worms. But do you feel the same sure. way about like Israel Palestine? How so? Like, do you feel that like Palestinians should be given their own state and protection therein, I, and and not be, be able to be under you? like a, a two? Uh, can I be honest with you? This is my take on on Israel Palestine. Okay, I think that Israel is clearly done war crimes done, and and acted not in good faith and and aggressed right mm -hmm. and. And, and what I also know is that America is not going to stop backing Israel. And mm -hmm. so the best case scenario, I think, is that all of the world's countries come together and say, let's take Palestinian refugees as much as we can. This is a oh, one-sided yeah. that's one -sided oh, the, de fight. definitely in terms of a pragmatic solution. That's uh yeah. that's base. That's but is, it's never gonna it's never gonna go the other way where like those Israeli people that are living in the settlements will leave. Um, and, and I think that that's just the nature of, unfortunately, how it is. Like, I don't really know if someone has like never ending, some group of people has like never ending ownership of a piece of land. I think like your ownership of a piece of land is goes only so far as you can defend it.
And sure. And, 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 and I mean, like, ideally, uh, when you're talking about international travel, I think the long term goal is that everyone eventually we would kind of like have a lot more open borders. We would be a lot more free to just visit and travel and, and work yeah, a, with a each lot other less kind of borders. You mean? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly it. But in the yeah. interim, the reason I bring up Palestinians and I try to use them as like a very loose uh, comparison to indigenous people is is that they are still the ones who are currently being oppressed in both environments. So the sure. idea first of saying like, well, we should just have like, why do you even want sovereign countries if you as a leftist lance are advocating for things like open borders and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. First, exactly, yeah. But th- there has to be stages. Like if the people who are currently being oppressed in this case it's the palestinians who are being you know starved out in gaza or it's indigenous people who are, who are being trespassed uh, by the rcmp and stuff well, like I think that they're a little bit different because i don't think that what canada is doing to the indigenous people is comparable to what palace to, to the oh to what I'm, I'm never i'm never going to say these two yeah. things with the exact same standard. yeah, yeah. No, so i no, think no, no, that, i'm just I'm, the only thing i'm comparing here is is the idea that the palestinians and indigenous people are the ones being oppressed right so yeah. the first the first stage i think is like i i'm for like a, a two-state solution in israel palestine right like i think palestinians should be uh, recognized as their own uh sovereign land and that way they cannot simply but how um, have you seen have you seen the i mean listen if we're gonna go into israel, yeah i know that's why i'm like i can't uh, I shouldn't have said this because we're going like, to talk about. I, I want to pop in for five minutes and be like, I, I think there I were some things that were mis-said in that conversation. I just want to clarify because that for Israel you. Palestine is fucked because it's like a jigsaw, right? Not it is. Even a jigsaw. It is. It's like it a, is. It's absolutely. Like a, yeah. So how, yes, it's, and, and it, the way the roads it, it, have been built directly around some of the settlements yeah. make it almost impossible. Okay. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, so it's not like you can just draw a line in the sand and say you get this half, exactly. you get this. Yeah, yeah, I know. Hundred percent. Yeah, and so again, going back to the original thing, though I agree that Israel hasn't been very nice. Israel has gone against the initial treaty, whatever this and that. They're, for better or worse, whatever you can call morally wrong, da 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 da. They're the aggressors and they will take over that country at some point. So I just. Well, they, say they, advocate. They, they, they've run that country. It's just basically yeah, an apartheid. No, I mean, state. like, there will be no more Palestinian people left, no more Palestinian oh, yeah. land. Well, I mean, if the only thing in that case you want to advocate for is taking refugees, I have no complaints yeah. there. That's that's yeah, the most okay. base state you can have. If you're like, because yeah. there's nothing we can ultimately do from exactly. here in the US Canada. The US is anyway. never going to stop. The US is yeah, never yeah, yeah. going to stop. Supporting so taking, them, taking refugees. Right? Yeah, yeah, I know. On that, exactly. on that, I totally agree with you. Taking refugees. Right. Yeah. So then it kind of goes back to the initial thing, which is like, I feel like a lot of leftists say stuff like free Palestine. Like, what does that mean? It's not going to happen. So because why the Pal- what the it means step? is that the Palestinian people in this case are the ones being oppressed, right? They're the ones they who are having to yeah. live within a two-tier state in which they are second-class citizens. Hence, For that's sure. why I use the term like an apartheid state. Sure, yeah, I, I get that. But like, what does that do? Oh, besides, what does that do? Oh, extend, you mean like besides, besides virtue extend. signal or whatever? Yeah, yeah, but it does nothing except extend their suffering, right? Like, yeah, you go Palestinian people, you keep fighting. It's like they're unfair fight. They're one sided. Uh, they don't have the military. They don't have the backing of any other country. I would, what well, I would this, disagree with you that fight? it brings them any further harm. I think the worst you could say that it's just hollow or vacuous that someone's like, yeah, free Palestine. It's a t-shirt, bro. Let me ask you a like question. that, that, that I could say, yeah, okay, fine. Okay, you just want to be recognized. Let me ask you a question. Let's say you're in high school, okay? And a, the big strong jock bully is beating the fuck out of a band geek. Would okay. you tell the band geek geek keep fighting while he's getting pummeled, or would you say, "Hey, you should walk away. Let me help you out." And oh, my experience being right? bullied is always you have to show the bully that at some point, like you're going to punch back, so it's not worth his time. But what if that results in you dying? Yeah, well, it's different. Like you can't compare the <laughs> right? bullying metaphor to the Palestinians. Yeah, they, they are can. they are dramatically outranked. It's as if the bully had uh, an Iron Dome protection. Right. It's like Iron Man. It's if the bully was Iron Man and then the student was just a regular kid. Then exactly, yeah, there's, yeah, there's not much you can so, do in terms of fighting yeah. back, right? But exactly. That, so this is how I feel. Is like what's happening in this situation with Israel Palestine is there's it's not even a close to a fair fight. So why are people leftists, especially instead of just jump well then what's the, the alternative just saying roll, roll over and die no no the alternative is hey every single country in the world needs to come to the aid of these palestinian people otherwise they're not going to be any palestinian people left in the world well sure but die. that only that only addresses the in from your perspective the refugees who are leaving the country not the 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 ones who already live there so that's I, that that, that, that mean, would be yeah, a huge I oversight understand. in my opinion sure yeah but like I think most people, when you, if you give them an option between staying and fighting a lost cause versus having a chance at life, like it's easy for us to say that, oh, whatever. But like, I'm talking about people who have kids and shit, right? Like, I don't know. 
I don't Both. know. I guess yeah, but like, the, the really sad thing is the, the majority of people who live in that region are kids. Like, I think youth yeah, make up like over 50% so, like, of the people who live there because all their parents die. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess, sure. But yeah, so going back to the... I don't even know how we got here. I just yeah, wish, that, that, I just that was me. Like, that was that was foolish. But yeah, just, sorry. Anyways, I, going back to the indigenous thing, I just find that like sometimes I hear indigenous rhetoric uh, even from like indigenous content creators and whatnot. And mm -hmm. to me as an immigrant living in Canada, it really makes me feel like when I lived in Kingston and racists used to tell me to go back to my country, it's, mm -hmm. it's not much different from that. And that's kind of like what I'm trying to touch on a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, Where, that's like, why I was, I that's, like well, I, that's why I was yeah. trying to call in and be like, that's not the way it's framed by indigenous right. people, especially, know, like, yeah. especially, like, especially the advocates. land back movement itself. Yeah. Or, or if you listen to indigenous politicians or ind indigenous, like, uh, you know, prominent uh, media figures, they will tell you that like, this, this happens to do a lot more with restorative justice, as well as the fact mm -hmm. that these are contracts that have already been negotiated, that are not being honored. That's the reason these things uh, occasionally, when they are brought to the Supreme Court of Canada, become victorious because like it's like yes legally based on the framework this has already been agreed upon so right, unfortunately right. for all the landowners of the section of uh you know uh, vancouver this is now going to become squamish territory um but yeah it's it should like again um i, I i'll try to to tell more people on the left if especially if you are a white leftist because that's the that's the time it really infuriates me that's when i feel you're just larping on twitter or something if you're a white leftist you live in san francisco and you're like uh all you uh, white colonizers have the blood on your hands uh, settlers <laughs> in the colonial state then fuck you all right because you're even, actually even act well you're making people, things though. worse you're making things even worse for yeah of course but you're making things worse yeah. for people who are advocating for land back because it's going to make it come across as either larpy or ridiculous or like you just said it's going to offend people who shouldn't otherwise be offended because if I explained it to you as I did, right? Mm. You were very uh, open to the idea. I was like, oh, well, that makes sense to me. Yeah, uh, exactly. you know, I might, I might not go all the way with you on this, but I, I don't feel as if you're antagonizing me by talking about it this yeah. way, right? Yeah, yeah, it's actually what you're saying is a good point because what ends up happening is those cringe people that you just mentioned, which is the conversation I was basically having, they will say, yeah, we advocate for land back. Like, so then th it just muddies up the entire land back and everything, right? Like, uh, like Black Hammer. I don't know if you're familiar with him. I don't know what that is, no. Okay, well then you get you get to, I just gave you your next 2 hours of content. Go Google it and watch the videos. <laughs> and then look up the program. Okay? All right. <laughs> what did you think of the Canadian election? Uh it was the best case scenario from a realistic perspective. Um Yeah. I mean, it's it's not the orange wave that I want, but it's exactly what I predicted it was going to be. It, it was almost like seat for seat. I think you're going to see by Friday, you're going to see a, a whole bunch of well, not a whole bunch. You'll probably see four, I'm going to guess, four more seats flip for the NDP uh, because the mail-in oh, ballots really? are being counted. Yeah, because Tuesday the mail-in ballots started. Oh, that's a big prediction, Lance. That's a big prediction. So that's what I, I'm going to I'm going to okay. throw my chips in that. I think we're going to get four more. Who, who are they taking from? Uh, any race, and I'd have to pull up the specific races for you, but I had three that I was looking at. Any race where it was coming down between an NDP candidate and a conservative, the mail-in ballots, I think, are overwhelmingly going to be oh. for liberals or NDP. Any battle that oh, was okay. a liberal or a conservative is going to go liberal. Any battle that, like, the ones that are very close, because there was over a million mail-in ballots, right? So if you look at the per district, you can actually go to elections.ca and you'll see how many uh, mail-in ballots, like, they've released the numbers, are in each quadrant still to be counted. And there's a ton of them that are like the races that went down to like 200 plus or something and won by that if there's like yeah. 8,000 mail-in ballots coming in that is going to be a drastically different result you know the mail the, the mail-in yeah. ballots are going to change but again i'm talking about like what i guess is going to be like four sure. four seats for the NDP. fine that's great uh i mean i think uh canada lost it was the lowest election uh, since 2008 so it ties with our voter lowest election ever wise? yeah uh voter oh, turnout wise was know. was obscenely low um, it cost $610 million. Uh, it gave us the exact same government we had a month ago. Um, Everybody says, says that, but don't you think it kind of at least confirms like, hey, this is the direction the country wants to go? Well, the good news is that like, I don't think Justin, like everyone says Justin Trudeau will call another slap election. I don't think he will. I think he's like, well, this is hopefully humbling enough that he's going to be like, I need to work with Jagmeet Singh now and, and get- You really think you know, that Justin Trudeau is going to be humble ever? No, no. <laughs> Would you but, be humble like that if you were 48 and looked like that, bro? Come on, he's handsome as fuck. He's been coddled his whole life. And you know what? He's still got great skin despite all the shoe polish he likes to wear. So, you know, get on him. Get on him. Uh, yo, I thought it was uh, interesting. Actually, there was one liberal candidate in Toronto 
who mm-hmm. uh, had to pause his campaign because um, he was like they found out he had sexual assault charges on. Uh, yeah, but wasn't that so, like I was I, I reported on that dropped. story, but yeah, we're, we're, they were dropped sexual char- charges, right? Yeah, but he still paused his campaign, okay. and uh, and then he got elected anyways, and now oh. people are like asking for him to uh, be taken down or step 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 away. Da da da. It's very interesting. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't but know. But yeah, you're that. you're happy. Uh, I mean, whatever. I'm. I I had a panel actually, a Canadian panel, mm-hmm. um, with Rational National. Oh, nice. And Christo, Christo uh, Evales and Nora Loretto. Nice. And uh, yeah, it was really good. And all of them basically kind of talked me into why having a minority government. They they were all of them were like I like minority governments always. Like, oh, I I do too. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. And, and but they, well, especially a minority sense. government that's propped up by the NDP, right? Yeah, exactly. It kind of made sense that kind of they have to work together with other parties, whether it's with the NDP on like social issues or whatever, or Mm -hmm. even working with conservative for like economic issues sometimes or whatever. Like, I don't know. I think it it makes sense. So it is Mm -hmm. what it is. It's more more democratic. I'm upset they didn't give us uh, I voted stickers. (laughs) What was did you want one? Yeah, man, like in America, everyone always posts pictures. Hey, I voted. And then they have the fucking sticker and it looks cool. <laughs> I asked the guy, I'm like, can they I have used, a sticker? Well, and he's like, used we don't do have that. one. Yeah, they used to do that. I think that's maybe a COVID thing. I think that was that was, oh. uh, that was was new this year. Because they, they oh, got rid I of a lot of programs this year, right? They used to have election programs in schools that were really cool. Like if you were a college yeah. kid, you could, you'd could you have vo- uh, voting booths there and stuff. But it's yeah, all gone yeah, now. no, they didn't have them this year. The other yeah. thing, one last thing before I let you go. Hmm. The I was voting, and you know how everyone always talks about lefty infighting. Yeah. Okay. Everyone thinks it's oh, it's on Twitter, lefty infighting, or it's on social media, it's out of control. I fucking go in the booth, bro. I looking, I see conservative candidate, liberal candidate, new Democratic Party, and then I see a communist candidate, and then I see a Marxist Leninist candidate. And you probably saw the Rhinos- about- Rhin- rhinoceros party too, right? Uh, I think I might have seen that one too. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a leftist. Uh, that's a leftist what is political wrong party with too. These people, bro. <laughs> that, that's Canada real has like life twenty parties. The infighting. <laughs> Fuck it! Oh, they're splitting thirty votes. Get together. <laughs> Put your differences aside. God damn, bro. <laughs> well, you know how we were talking about LARPers, right? It's true. No, I mean, this is real life. These guys put the time and fucking they got on the ballot. God damn. Anyways, I thought that was funny. Uh, oh. All right, bro. Good chatting okay. with you. Um, yeah, you too. And uh, yeah, call in anytime. And I, what do you got planned? You're, you got your streaming or you're not streaming? Oh, I'm streaming. Yeah, you're live. Oh, are you every, streaming every, live? Every, everyone heard everything. You is just your said. chat roasting me again today like they were last time? Uh, No, they thought the second half of what you said was kind of cute because they're just like, it seems so easy. Um, And then they're laughing at who votes for the MLs right now. But they were okay. they were roasting you during the Palestine. Bro, their front. mom doesn't even vote for them. <laughs> <laughs> they're roasting me for what? For the Palestine part. But now they're like, we're being good. This is funny. All right, whatever. It is what it is. Listen, as always, you don't have to agree with my takes. Uh, it is what it is. All right, bro. We'll chat. All right, soon, cheers. Yeah, yeah sounds Later. good. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, you were good. You were on your best behavior chat. But I wanted to clarify that because, like, I was watching the debate, and like, the thing was, I noticed these debates have a lot of like shelf life on uh, Twitch now, right? I turn on the uh, the Twitch, and I see Joe Lewis is debating. Uh, oh, sorry, Hansa Har- Joe Lewis is watching Hansa Harkir debate Demon Mama. And then I see someone else is like, I can't wait to watch the Joe Lewis review because he's a teacher of the Hans versus Demon Mama debate that's taking place right now. And I can't wait to watch the debate of the debate. And so when I tuned in to see Dr. Heem debating Professor Flowers and they were talking about land back, I just wanted to make sure that everyone was like, okay, this is not going to be too wild, you know? The debate of sounds exhausting. Yeah. Well, here's the thing I'll, I'll tell you this from experience. I wanted, um, I need your emails for Twitch, that's true, that's true, alright, I apologize. Um, I wanted, uh, or sorry, when Lycan offered, uh, or just said, Lance, I'm throwing the debate, he did it on Twitter, and when you do something on Twitter, it's so everyone sees it, so you can't, like, walk away from it. Um, oh, thank you again, Lord Flatoos, appreciate all your generosity. Oh, Sargon of Akkad, welcome, it's good to see you. Um... Nothing is gained from the debate, bro. Spear. Some things are entertainment, blood sports. But when um, yeah, when Lycan was like, I throw the the gauntlet down, debate me. And I was like, okay, fine. I, I I love to talk about the U.S. Army. I'll debate you, uh, and had some fun. That's not the end of it. 
like you think it's the end of it but then right afterwards destiny takes your debate he watches it once destiny watches it all the dgg like uh uh, what is it, Extended Universe? Because there is a DGG Extended Universe. He has, like, his debate review man, uh, Book Smarts, who will then spend seven hours pulling your debate apart. And then there's uh, the other individual who will do this, and then there's this guy who does this, and then there's all the, the orbiters who are smaller streamers who all want to, like, become that one day. And so then they all review the debate. And then before you know it, like... It's, it's a full, like, four or five days where all you do is you scroll through Twitch and everyone is watching all these other debates and throwing it. Yes, it is a vortex. It is 100% a vortex. Yeah. Um, or it's a meta. Like the debate, everyone talks about the hot tub meta or the gambling meta. The debate meta is the biggest meta of all the metas. Cause it's just, it's the meta within 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 the meta, you know? Yeah. Hey, do you, do you, do you like movies? Do you, do you like, do you like surfs? Do you want? Do you want? Do you want movies and sur surfs watching the movies? So then come over to the new channels. It's the surf cinema. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Can you do the thing? You know that uh, thumbs up and comment and all those things that help us out in the algorithm that controls every aspect of our lives. Also, if you happen to have a Facebook account, um, can you can you delete it? Like just just delete it. You should probably delete your Facebook account because it's just. It's not a great company, but hey, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I understand. And uh, could you also go to facebook.com slash the surf times then and uh, give us a little like and a follow. We're just trying to push back against the fact that people like Ben Shapiro happen to dominate the platform entirely. And when everyone asks, why do older generations believe the things they believe? One of the problems is the majority of them on social media use Facebook. So to counter that, uh, we're just going to be on there too now. Also, if you happen to have a union or a worker co-op or even a leftist project podcast website, Zoom, MySpace, it doesn't matter. We will advertise it for free on this channel. All you got to do is go to wearesurfs.com and use the forms that we got there, wearesurfs.com. Thanks, everybody. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, may you shower us mortals with gifts from the heaven. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are your humble jesters, clowning around for your amusement. To our lord, Trevor R. and Alexander Thaler, we give you our thanks for this meager land for us to toil our seed. To our knights of the round table, Hagbard Sealine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariana McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, ants are still running the world, Coulter Smith, Tom Grow, Val9000, Jenna Tal, Dark Puppy, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, the Tim Caucus, Multi Mondi, Trevor Janis, Lemmy 101, Anthropophojack, Saren 42, Chronic to Hemphog, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Josh Mickelson, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our glasses and we salute you our comrades.